Bizarre Brain Comics. Hello. Gary here for Bizarre Brain Comics. Oh. Where I like to talk about all kind all kinds of comics. Try to break it down as art and literature. Yeah. Especially talk about the art. Because remember, comics are art. Yeah. More correctly, I like the sequential sequential art or storytelling through through a uh, uh, sequence of, of pictures. Pictures. Ooh, kind of like film in a way. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm babbling there. And today, the book I want to talk about here is. Uh, uh, DC Comics Limited Collector's Edition of the Bible. From 1975. I'm not going to delve too deeply into the creators here. This was uh, from, 19, like I said, 1975. And it was intended to be the first issue of, of a series in this format. Uh, it says says right there, first in the series, but uh, to my knowledge, uh, they never had any more than this first issue. If I remember correctly, I think I think I remember seeing a house ad for a second issue, but I don't think it was ever published. If so, it's so rare, I've never seen it anywhere. And uh, this, this particular book has also uh, recently been... Um, I don't know how recently, uh, in recent years anyway, um, re, uh, reprinted or republished in uh, a facsimile edition, but it's hardback. I, I was surprised when I saw that at uh, Mile High uh, Mega Comic Store a few months ago because I didn't know anything about it. Okay, and uh, the creators in this were primarily because Sheldon Mayer, who uh, is a DC writer and editor, or was at the time, and Joe Kubert, who, who was an artist and writer and editor, and in this case he edited this and was the uh, the, the uh, graphic designer. Sheldon Mayer wrote the script, and then it was drawn very beautifully drawn by the uh, Filipino artist uh, Nestor Redondo. And here in the back, on the back page, we'll get to it. They have a bibliography, a uh, string of books that they use for reference of various kinds for uh, a biblical reference. And it even has a special thanks to E. Nelson Birdwell, D.C.'s resident biblical scholar. And he was a writer and editor back in those days. And may have <laughs> been either uh, um, academically or personally as a scholar of biblical stuff. Oh. Mm. Okay. And I've talked about Joe Kubert in some detail before, and I may go into detail on the others some other time. But that's, let's get into it. It's, it's long, and I'm not going to focus too much on them. Yay! Okay, here you can get a good view of the front cover, and then I want to show you this. This is this is a rough, a rough copy. It's the only one I've got. I did when this came out. I did not buy it. I bought it years this copy years later. Okay, you see that the, the well, it's open full page. I mean a, a double cover spread, drawn by Joe Kubert. And of course, obviously, this is intended to be Moses. And and here it covers the, the stories that the, that uh, this issue covers. Okay, Moses is not even in this story, or in this book. But show you, show you that. Yeah, it's a great character in that that face. My beard, who knows? My beard kind of goes with the uh, 
the, the matter, the subject matter. And look at this frontispiece, piece drawn by Nestor Redondo. It's beautiful. It does, should have a poster all its, all its own. It's beautifully drawn, beautifully drawn. Okay, and stories from the Bible, book one. Okay, and here we start off with this lovely, lovely drawing by Nestor Redondo. Old man being visited by his grandchildren, and they're just, just talking along, and he starts talking, uh, telling them stories, the stories of the Bible, and why he thinks, oh, look at those horses. Everything's beautiful. Now, Nestor Redondo, in the 70s, he he drew a book that I used to like, uh, Rima the Bird Girl. It was a series of book by from uh, DC Comics based on the novel uh, Green Mansions, and uh, was it was a jungle adventure story, adventure book, uh, and uh, Nestor Redondo drew it beautifully. But one thing I always noticed: so let's look at here, and you'll see him again later. <sighs> Just the incredibly beautiful. He even had some better ones later. He drew birds. All the, all the animals are wonderful. Here he's just talking. Here he gets into the beginning, the creation. And an interesting method of, of uh, conveying the this, this story here. The water. Does a great job with that water. The earth being formed. And then the seas being the days, and the seas being filled with. But notice, all these are the primitive forms, archaic, paleontological, extinct beings, animals, life forms. And then we get the meat, the creation of Adam, and that's again an interesting visual uh, um, representation of the creation of Adam. There's Adam. And at the Garden of Eden, and here's it, and all this, oh, this, the animals, the, uh, 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 all the background, the scenery, it's just incredibly lovely. And here's the Tree of Life, again, look at the, look at the birds, oh, just beautiful birds, and then the way he did the trees, the texture in the trees now as it said this this is part our primary stories from genesis here we go there's the tree of tree of life and adam is alone and this is where he's put put to sleep and creates uh, uh eve is created from his side and often say his rib the bible does not say his rib it says from his side but as long. But I know since Joe Kubert was the uh, uh, graphic designer, I wonder if he, if he hit, might have done some of the uh, uh, um, 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 story layout here. Because this here, except for, of course, the beautiful Nestor Redondo inking on it, is lo really looks like a Joe Kubert figure, as well as this one right here. Really looks like a Joe Kubert figure. But oh, just it's incredibly beautiful, and this, of course, the visual storytelling is great. He's, he's a master. But I have to wonder. Okay, you notice here. <clears throat> I have to wonder if the Kubert and Mayer, both both being being Jews, and uh, uh, um, Nestor Redondo being a uh, Fil uh, Filipino man. Uh, why, for the depiction of Adam and Eve, <clears throat> they happen to look like. Northern Europeans, when that's supposed to be taking place in the Middle East. You'd think they'd look Middle Eastern. <clears throat> but I don't know. Just, it's just it's just a beautiful rendering. Here is a good, interesting depiction of the serpent from the garden. Tempting Eve. Notice it's six limbs here. Uh, yeah. The, the visual visual here is, is great because he's like in totally encircled Eve to show he's drawing drawing her in. So she eats of the fruit. Notice it didn't show an apple because it ne never does say apple an apple. Uh, it's just usually depicted as an apple, but some fictitious form of fruit. 
and then suddenly, oh, with the darkness and the depiction, oh, they, they, after eating the fruit, they know something's wrong. And the de depiction of, of, of that, just wonderful. With the coloring and the shadows. And they cover themselves. And hair got, no, look at, look at the texture, texturing in the skin of that creature. And here it finally becomes a legless serpent. And they're cast out. Then it, have, it is, has these little, little uh, pages here. It's just like, like digging into the past. Some about ar archaeology uh, and, and depictions of, of uh, various things from Bible times. Okay, now we're on to Cain and Abel. Again, beautifully drawn, beautifully drawn. Has uh, Adam working with the children on the field uh, with their flocks. And Cain, Abel giving his sacrifice. Cain giving his sacrifice, which was rejected by God. Now this, to my way of thinking, here we go, here we go. And that the conflict between Cain and Abel, and Cain kills Abel. Rather brutal, brutal, but beautifully drawn. That's all I have to say. It's beautifully drawn, beautifully depicted. But again, Northern Europeans. Now, by my way of thinking, because I've some of what I've thought for for years that this is. This whole thing is an allegory for, this is me, I'm not talking theologically, I'm talking about in context of the story, of a conflict between early herding people, after the days of uh, hunter-gatherers, the early uh, uh, herding nomads and the the sedentary early farm, early sedentary farmers. That's the way I see it. But that's just me. And here, Cain is being punished and cast out. It's being marked. It never shows what the mark of Cain is. Then on to the generations again. Beautifully. Now look at look at these animals. Beautiful depiction. Beautiful depiction. All the figures. All the everything. The descendants. And then to, mentions Enoch. And then... Continues on, and then we're approaching the Noah, the story of Noah and the flood. And again, the way that it's colored and shaded here shows shows uh, the grim grimness of it. Now, I won't really here we show see Noah working, um, and all bad stuff going on in the background, and Noah's working. Now, well, here's one thing I really like shows the. Uh, the, uh, the research that went into this, like, look at the, the saw, that ancient kind of saw, which I have seen in the pictures before. And up here, we have a square and a plumb bob. Here is an adze. And down here, we, we see uh, a plane. Um, I... I've seen this kind of tool before. I just don't know what it is. And here we have have chisels, <clears throat> all kinds of tools used for working wood at the time. And, it's, and of course, the beautiful, beautiful figure there. And so Noah starts building the, the tremendous ship. Oh my gosh! You see how how huge those those ribs are. I have to wonder how he would have been able to. Uh, To bend those uh, those ribs, the wood for those ribs, and his family working. And he works for hundreds of years building the ship. Here it gives the size, the estimated size from the description in the Bible: 450 feet by 75 feet, and that is ridiculously huge for a wooden ship. Of course, it's not. Because a wooden ship, this is just reality. I'm not talking about, about the Bible here. In reality, it wouldn't work. It would not, a wooden ship that size could not, would not be seaworthy. Probably could not stay afloat. The largest wooden ship ever built was almost 200 years ago. <clears throat> I think it was half this size. Uh, and this was built by 
modern, at that time, modern techniques by people who knew how to build ships. And it f was so flexible, it was barely seaworthy. It leaked like a sieve, no matter what they did, because, of, because it flexed and the, the bilge pumps had to be constantly, um, constantly pumping water out of the bilge because it was taking on water. And then eventually, it, within a few years, it sank in a storm. Okay, that's where you see all the animals here coming. Of course, these are all modern contemporary animals. <clears throat> Coming to the, to the, and again, just look at the beautiful, beautiful. Of course, doesn't, it's, the comic doesn't talk too much about because there's two by two, and all the unclean animals are two, all the clean animals were, set, were seven. One depiction. Then the storm breaks. Beautiful depiction of the storm and all the people being drowned. Another horrid thing for, 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 for well, I won't get into that, but, uh, Again, the water. Look at that beautiful depiction of the water here. Nestor Redondo did just a, such a beautiful job. And this this is a great way to show how all alone they are after the after the storm, and they're floating away, and absolutely nothing. Then it finally comes to rest. He sets out the the raven, doesn't find anything. Then uh, and his double page spread, beautiful. Beautiful depiction there. The dove brings back a fresh olive olive leaf. I have to wonder how or olive olive branch. <laughs> I have to wonder where it would have gotten an olive branch because the rest of the world was under underwater. Anyway, and shows all the birds going on out and all the animals coming out. And I have to wonder what the animals would have to eat because all they have to eat is each other. Again, he. he Nestor Rodano must just love birds because he does such loving, beautiful detail in, bir in his birds. But everything is look at the apes there and the zebras. Oh, so wonderful. And here he is and they have, uh, offering a sacrifice. And that's the end, of the end of the story. And they're leaving out one of the most interesting parts, which is afterwards. Uh, when Noah got drunk and his sons come in and saw him... Uh, Saw he was naked. One of them took a look at him and saw, saw that he was naked. And I, was, I think that was Ham. And Ham was condemned to be ser servant of uh, forever of his, he and his descendants were to be servants of his brothers because they saw his father naked, which makes no sense to me. And here's more Bible feature. Here's children in school and the little kind of tablets they used, how they had their lunch and their monitor or teacher. Interesting stuff. And we're going into the Tower of Babel. It shows a cigarette. It's a Joe Cooper's a beautiful depiction of the cigarette. And it's just as, just as good in the, the story here. So the Tower of Babel. And now the people are building, again, beautiful, beautiful depiction of a cigarette, which is probably 10 times bigger than any cigarette that ever actually was built. And in fact, I don't think... With uh, uh, and this one, this looks like it's larger than the um, than the pyramids, from the way it's depicted here. Uh, but uh, you know that um, physics comes into play here, and a stone building could not support itself built this size; it would collapse, which is probably part of the the story. Uh, of how the uh, the story actually came to be here, they built built the Tower of Babel, and then hey, these it's all. Then suddenly God makes the people so that they can't understand each other, and the city is abandoned with an unfinished tower. Which remember in in these times Babylon was a uh, a seat of commerce, so people came from all over the the world, which wasn't too too far at that time. Um, and all speaking uh, a multitude of languages, and uh, and was a, and there was a lot of uh, learning and 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 um, what's anyway uh, education was readily available, at the, and there and then they had a fall uh, uh, a decline, and the great ziggurat that they were had been building for centuries 
was never completed. The people, their education uh, was was lost because the economy had completely collapsed, and no one could no longer read or write. And I think that is a good uh, 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 origin, prob probable origin of uh, of the Tower of Babel story. And here we have and Joe Cooper soldiers, that chariot being pulled by these wild asses. Of course, you've got Joe Cooper and various weapons. Duck, duck build axe. Now the story of Abraham. Here he is as a boy. He's growing up because they're in the city of Ur and they're worshiping the uh, the idols. Abraham and they left the city of Ur. Oh, they traveled long and far. He had some followers. Here's a drought, disease, animals dying. Here's where he he and his wife Sarai and their their followers, and they go into Egypt. And uh, we know his we know his wife as better as Sarah, but he was Sarai. Here she, she is young and beautiful. They go into Egypt, and because he is uh, his wife is so beautiful, and he's afraid he will be killed. Abraham says that his says that Sarai is his sister, while well, he is to be. To be courted by the uh, by the pharaoh. And I kind of noticed it here, just about here, is about the only place you see people who who don't look Northern European. Everyone, where else? Everyone just think it's an odd, odd choice. But they they leave. He's kicked. They're kicked out of Egypt because of the the lie that he told. Beautiful depiction. Beautiful depiction of that valley. He's getting older. Here we go with Sodom and Gomorrah. And again, a beautiful rendition of a, a horrifying scene. All this, this battle that Sodom is being overrun by invaders. And Abraham's nephew Lot is taken prisoner. And they, uh, uh, Abraham is informed. And his people, he and his his followers, they go and attack. They wipe them out, wipe out those invaders. Oh, another beautiful depiction. Look at the depiction of those camels. And uh, of the war, and they defeated the invaders. Lot is saved. And here they show all the stuff like this. This is when he's being told talked uh, spoken to uh, by God um, this is when the angels of angels have come supposedly angel, angels have come and the, Abraham and Sarai are old with no children and this, they're told that she's going to have a baby she is going to have a bear son they did just before that here is because she was barren had her uh, had uh, uh, um, Abraham get with their slave Hagar to have a child. And of course, it doesn't mention that. Of course, then they ha had a son. Um, and uh, then uh, after after Sarah bears a son, that uh, Hagar and her son are cast out. Mm -hmm. Ishmael. With it. Ishmael. That's not a very good thing, if you ask me. Okay, here we are, and uh, the going to, judgment going to be placed on the city of so uh, Sodom. The, the details in this so so beautiful. The interior, okay. and they've the, okay, the uh, angels have come to speak with Lot in Sodom, and then the Sodom Sodomite people come and try to uh, uh, they want here it shows them that they want this they want the silver in their pockets but that's not it and uh, <clears throat> they're going to be tear down the door but here it does not show that what happened in the story was that lot offered his 
his two daughters to the crowd to, to spare the strangers. <clears throat> but they didn't want that. And they, uh, they're struck blind. Ah, oh, I'm blind. They're struck blind. Again, beautiful depiction. Then they tell tell Lot to get him, get him and his family out of out of Sodom. Here they are. But his married daughters and son sons in law and and uh, the grandchildren would not leave. So he has to take his two daughters and his wife, and they leave. And then, as they're leaving, they're, of course they're told not to t look back. And then, all hell breaks loose, loose quite literally. So. Again, a horrifying image, but just so incredibly beautifully rendered as, as Sodom is destroyed by fire. And here we are. It says, stay beneath my robes, my daughters. Do not look back. Broiling smoke and flame billows up from the stricken city, mixing with the dark clouds above. <clears throat> and then... Lot's wife turns back and very dramatically for the conclusion is turned into a pillar of salt. Very dramatic con conclusion for the, for the story. Yes, it is, but it doesn't go all the way. It doesn't tell what happens afterwards with Lot and his daughters in the cave while they're hiding out. Read the Bible for, for yourself to find out what happened there. And herein finishes telling the story the stories and says okay we'll talk again another time and here we go with the bibliography and again the cover no comments on the uh, the theology it's just a beautiful piece of work I got it years years later after it was was published I'm glad I did I enjoy reading it and especially enjoy looking at the beautiful art it was i think it was all lo lovingly created by by these men and no shade thrown anywhere on that and i'm running over that's all i've got thank you for joining me if you if you liked it uh <clears throat> please share it with other comic book friends share subscribe and remember, oh, I'm going to show you the whole thing. Remember, comics are art.